Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Entitled Customer Throws Tantrum Over Burger Bill. You won't believe the owner's response. The second story, Boss Threatens to Sue Over Resignation. Tales of a Toxic Workplace The third story Unwanted guest pushes the limits until the police are called The first story is You mean I have to pay for it? AKA why I love my boss This happened at my job last night and while it wasn't my table I saw the whole thing go down I work at a diner style restaurant in a college town I'm gonna refer to it as Burger Place, BP We're known for a one pound burger challenge we also have very strict rules for our customers. They can either have their food remade or taken off the check, not both. These two things are very important to the story. So last night I was serving, and because Sunday nights are usually very slow for us, it was me and two new servers, who were both training. My boss, the owner, aka D, was behind the bar, watching and helping when the new girls needed him. D is great, he's calm and soft-spoken, but he supports employees and is pretty good at calming down rude customers. I've never seen him angry before this and I've worked for him for over a year. A four top comes in and I sit them in one of the new girls sections. It's a family, two parents and two sons who were college aged, all blonde haired. Their server, NG, goes to take their order and the father orders two one pound burgers, one for him and one for his wife. The wife, who is about 90 pounds soaking wet, does not speak to NG the entire time. The sons also order their food and I kind of forget about the table while I'm dealing with my own tables. After their food comes out, NG comes up to me and nearly in tears. She tells me there's a problem with her table and D is in the office on the phone. D trusts me to do managerial things when he isn't there, so I go up to the table to see what I can do. The wife and sons are both staring at their laps not making eye contact with me, while the father seems very agitated. M will be me and CG will be crazy guy. M. Hey guys, what seems to be the problem? CG. There's a white hair in my wife's burger and it needs to be fixed right now. M. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry about that. Would you like to have it remade or taken off your bill, sir? CG. Well, my wife needs to eat something. Just remake it, okay? And fast. Now, we don't have any blonde or white-haired kitchen staff working that night. NG has black hair, but the hair is white, apparently. Plus, the burger has mozzarella cheese on it which tends to look stringy after a bite. Still, I take the burger to D in the office and have the kitchen remake it. He searches the burger and cannot find a single hair. D tells me to watch and see if they give NG any more trouble, but after the burger is fixed, everything seems fine. Until it's time to pay. The wife finishes about a quarter of her burger and her husband asks for a to-go box. NG brings them the box and their check. A couple minutes later, she comes up to me again. NG, he doesn't want to pay for his wife's burger. I immediately go get D, and he goes up to the table. CG, I can't believe you aren't going to take that burger off. D, I'm sorry sir, is there something wrong with the burger we remade for you? CG, yes it was horrible, my wife wouldn't even touch it. D, I'm sorry sir, we remade it and you told NG everything was fine. We offered to take it off the ticket but you preferred to have it remade. CG, you mean I have to pay for it? D, yes sir. CG now standing and yelling disturbing the rest of the restaurant. The management is terrible here. I can't believe I have to pay for this horrible burger. Give me the owner's number right now. D. Sir, I'm the owner. CG now in D's face screaming. This is effing ridiculous. How are you going to make me pay for an effing burger with a hair in it? D. Sir, since you clearly were just looking for a free meal, you can have one. However, you're not welcome in my restaurant ever again. Get out before I call the police for causing a disturbance. He grabbed his silent red-faced family and stormed out all while ranting about how terrible the restaurant was and how he was going to give us a terrible review. I calmed NG down, and D simply apologized to the rest of the tables inside and went to the office to check his blood pressure. It's nothing new, just another bunch of entitled crazy people who want freebies, but it's still not pleasant to watch. But your boss is a cool guy. I respect such owners who stay on the side of their employees and don't try to please such nasty customers and everything. Respect to him. God, they had a child with them. The father looks like his sons were older than he was. If he didn't want to pay for his wife's burger, he could have taken the leftovers and then deducted them from his bill. 
Don't want to pay? You can't take the leftovers home. You choose to pay or give them back. Some establishments have gone so far as to put up notices. If you don't complain about problems before you eat half the portion, you pay for it. To cut off freeloaders, of course, genuine problems can be solved, but not by the principle of eat three-fourths and then say it was terrible. Sorry if it was so bad. You stopped after one or two pieces. Eat that much and you bought it. The second story is, my boss threatened to sue me if I quit. So this happened years ago now, but I'm feeling inspired to share my story. Seeing how many terrible bosses refuse to let their employees quit. I also want people to know not to be intimidated by these companies. So I work as an engineer in a very active industry, but because of growing up poor and other factors, I've traditionally always shied away from salary negotiations, and I've been historically underpaid, as I have, in the past couple of years come to understand. This is coupled with a fear of not being skilled enough for the work that I do, which leads to me working long hours, 80 plus, and getting capable at building in a variety of areas that's very profitable to my employers. I mention all this because I started off in the industry in an okay business, but was constantly failing and seeing the writing on the walls, I knew it was about to close for good. So I was actively looking for another job, and was lucky to land a position at a new company all called Aviato. Aviato was a law firm looking to make a push into my industry, and it had all the funds and capital it needed to move forward and establish an engineering team. They offered me 60k with no benefits and no equity, and honestly I was ecstatic about it. This was definitely the most I'd ever been paid. I was also okay with no equity because this signaled two things to me. One, my wife and I were still establishing our lives, so if I needed to move because of her getting a job, then I needed to uproot quickly. Two, that the company felt that they didn't need me to be a permanent part of the team. Because you offer equity as a way of having employees feels invested, right? Fast forward a year and we built out the entire product working long hours, and honestly building something we could be proud of. It was robust, and the business and clients were very happy to have. We instituted a lot of technology, product, and agile practices that definitely put us on track to start up happiness. And I was lead engineer on this project the entire time. We launched, we partied, everything was good. However, my wife did eventually get that job, a dream job across the country, something she'd been working towards for 10 plus years at this point. So I thought, great, product release, wife has a new job, everyone's happy, let's move on. So I sat down with my boss and mentioned all the great work we did, and that I was handing in my notice because of the awesome job offer my wife just received. His eyes widened, his jaw fell to the ground, and he exasperated, you're leaving? After that, things got awkward, and so I left for the day. For a bit of background on my boss, we'll call him Ben Curd. He was from Old Money and he was the head lawyer at the firm, and in control of Aviato. He was used to getting his way and could be easily offended but some perceived slight. This was the case many times with other engineers, and I lost count of the number of times I had to sit down with him, calm him down, tell him not to go nuclear, throw everything we're working on away, and try to get him to see other people's perspective. There was a lot of managing upwards of his emotions so we could just build this product. The very next day after the now infamous meeting, my boss called me into what I had assumed was a counter offer. I could have worked remote and I did offer to stay on for months to help them out. I'll never forget the next few exchanges. Ben Curd. I sat down with business partner and we both think why not take it out of your hide? Me. Take it out of my hide? You're threatening to sue me if I quit? Ben Curd. That's what we'll do. I've been very nice to you and I've given you 60k. I could use that as a down payment on a house. Me. You didn't give me that 60k, that was my salary. I worked for that money. You can't prevent me from quitting. None of this is how the employer slash employee relationship works. At this point I just got up and left. It honestly makes me so de-angry even now thinking back on it. After this meeting they attempted some damage control by having some team goodbye drinks, and I showed up for 5 minutes, said goodbye to the team and left. I didn't acknowledge Ben Curd's presence. Some months later at the new job across the country, I talked with the other engineers and told them how Ben Curd tried to sue me for quitting. They were horrified by the entire exchange, and I found out a little later that they had quit. It just wasn't worth the risk working for this man. This cascade of quitting and brain drain ended up being too much for the nascent Aviato product, and they were forced to stop its development. It's still a law office to this day, but they never took the product any further. They never did end up suing me. Edit. I believe the logic was, if he quits then our development will slow down. Basically, the act of me quitting slows down product development costing them time to market. I believe they thought I'd be responsible for those damages. I didn't consult a lawyer because I didn't believe the threat was credible at all. 
I suppose my thinking then and now is that to force me to work against my will, i.e. slavery, would be legally indefensible. I don't know if they did actually have grounds since they didn't pursue, but maybe they could have. Edit. This was in a right to work state, so I believe that means either party can terminate the relationship at any time for any reason. Will he sue you for wanting to quit? What kind of stupidity is that? Did he think that no one has the right to quit? What's wrong with this boss? Or does he think that if you work for him, you'll work for him for life? If so, with the salary he paid you, it's more like slavery. I hate such bosses. They think that if they have a higher position and founded this company, they have the right to control the lives of their employees. I would love to see how many thousands of dollars he would spend if he decided to actually sue you. Oh, and the ending about firing other employees and the fact that his business will not grow is really what your former boss deserves. Good luck to you, OP. I hope your new boss will be a normal and reasonable person. The third story is... Finally, DNR listed. For this story, I'm gonna call the guest Kevin. Kevin has come to our property many times, and it's the same thing every time. He would stay once every couple of weeks, so he wasn't even really a regular. I see him walking in and I instantly get annoyed. Kevin's come every single time without a reservation and trying to check in early. If it's available, sure, no problem. But when it's not, then it's a big scene about how he always stays here and deserves to have a room when he comes in. He isn't even part of the shiny member club. He's a random local, you know the type. Well, every single time I tell Kevin how much the cost is, he gives me less. Then gives me several different cards to try until he magically comes out with the extra cash. That's how it's been checking him in every single time. Checkout has been the same problem every single time, but this time I've had enough. Our checkout time is 12 p.m. I call his room at 12.30 p.m. and he claims to be extending, as he's said every other time. I tell him he must come down and extend the reservation within 10 minutes. 12.45 p.m. rolls around, so again I call him and told him he has to pay to check out. He comes down at 1 p.m. and claims his girlfriend is going to send him money. I told him he has to pay or check out. I generously give him until 1.30 p.m. to get the money or he will have to leave. What do you know, it's 1.30 p.m. and he's still in the room. I call the room three times, no answer. He comes to the desk and gives me several cards that do not work. He says he'll get a different card from his car. When I see him leave, I have a housekeeper put a new key on his door, making his keys stop working. Well, guess what? He doesn't stop back at the desk after going to his car. No, I watch him on the camera go back to his room, using the side door not even going out to a car. The key does not work, so he comes back to the desk. He comes to the desk saying he would like to try his card again. I told him he has to check out, so I walked him to his room, held the door open while he collected his things. While we walked back and I told him he's not able to stay at our property anymore. He was upset and asked why, and I told him, you've given us too many issues with paying for your room and checking out on time. He got defensive and I just explained I'm doing my job. You would think now he's finally gone and dealt with. Nope. When I thought he left, I found him sitting in the business center about 15 minutes later. When I tell him he has to leave since he's loitering, he goes out and sits on one of our front benches near the front door. At 2 p.m. I called the police and they made him finally leave the property. Well, here we are. Kevin has once again decided to visit a welcome but only if you have a room hotel. As always, he has no reservation. As always, he wants to check in early. And as always, he offers us a fun game of which of my magic cards will work. This time, Kevin was even delayed in checking out and we ended up saying a friendly goodbye to him completely forever, including his free ride in a police car. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.